Is that happening with you? Are you doing that? Um, Stop. Yes no. Stop. Okay, okay. Can I get a yes? And that will be the way you live until you die and they bury you in the ground. Got a mask inside of me. You better watch out. If your enemies are broke, ahead of full prophecy to be the greatest beast the world has ever seen. I feed him every day like the bones clean. I feed him all the hate and he grows me and he gets caught. Okay, I love it. All right, cool. So listen, so I'm going to give you some things, Robert. This is for you. This is for everybody. This is for me. Like, this is for us all. Okay, so I want you to write this down. Never let your fans outgrow you. Never let your team outgrow you. This is... This is probably the most important message. Never let your kids outgrow you. Never let your wife outgrow you. Never let, never let anyone outgrow you. This is the number one rule to being a leader, okay? Like, dude, over my dead body, is somebody gonna come in to what I do for a living or my family or my kids or my wife or my team and fucking outgrow me? I need everybody to understand this right now. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just look in the mirror and I want you to ask you a question. Am I the greatest in this company, period? Am I, am I the greatest? And by the way, like, not because I think I am. I know that you guys need to all think you are the greatest, um, but are you really? Does your numbers reply it? Is your name in everyone's mouth? And they're saying, dude, Noah's a killer, bro. Noah's the guy. I want to be like Noah. I'm talking to Robert Reed, but I'm giving an example, Noah. I want you to listen to me. Robert, every day you pick up the phone and people are like, man, dude, I'm having trouble right Right now, look, hey, Robert, how do I get to be like Noah? How can I get a team like Noah? How can I get people to, to have loyalty to me like, like Noah's people have loyalty to him? How can I get numbers like Noah? Okay, so I want everybody to think about this real quick, okay? Are you giving your God's honest best? And I would tell you it's, the answer is no. And I know that for me. And I told my team, I said, all I do every single day is that I do what I tell my sales team to do. Number one, I'm looking for something to sell. I'm selling something or I'm training to get better. Now, I need everybody to know this right now. As a leader, you need to be doing one of three things. Number one, you need to be looking for something to sell, which means you're constantly pushing your team to find the next sell, find the next volume mark, find the next deal. Number two, you're looking for someone to recruit. As a leader, you're looking for someone to recruit. You guys must go on recruiting sprees like freaking crazy. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of you, you don't recruit. You keep your mouth shut. And you're just hoping that shit's gonna work out. You're hoping that the Meraki recruit system is eventually gonna bring magically some recruits into the universe and you're gonna get the right people. Ain't gonna happen, okay? You need to know how to go recruit people. What's that mean? Let's say, Robert, I'm out eating dinner. I just wanna tell you how this goes. I'm out eating dinner and I see Robert. And I'm like, hey, Robert, what's going on, man? Hey, my name's Andy Elliott. Number one, I saw the way that you were talking to those people. I like that. Your customer service is really good. What'd I do? I complimented them. Let me ask you a question. How long have you worked here? Cool, man. Are you from around this area? I haven't, I don't know if you've ever sold anything, but you seem like a good salesperson. I see the way you're carrying yourself. I watch the way you're working with your hands. I'm looking at your eye contact. That's all sales. Did you know that? And they're like, nah, I didn't know that. Or yeah, you know, I love sales. You're like, well, listen, let me ask you a question. I'm not the best at math, but I'm sure this job doesn't pay you the best. And I'm not being disrespectful and saying this job isn't a great job, but sales when you can find a sales job that is a level 10 earning opportunity, it's like money grows on trees. It's pretty amazing. And how do I know that? Because Robert, I work for a sales company and I see my guys' checks. They're big, especially the ones that can do what you do, which is just made a great relationship with that person, had good eye contact, were laughing and joking and built rapport with them. I saw that and I like that. Look, I'd like to have a conversation with you. Okay, can, I, can we exchange numbers? I wanna set up a time. Are you open to making more money? Are you open to making more money? Yes, I am. Good, we need to have a conversation. Every one of you right now should be recruiting anywhere from three to five people a week. A week, okay? Listen, I, I was telling Robert that the world right now, I'm, I'm gonna go over this with you, every day I get, I get 300 DMs a day from young men between 20 and 25 years old that message me that say, Andy, I've listened to your message. I've listened to what you said about loyalty, what you said about trust, how, how you said, I want you to hear me out here, how you said that the broken, the rejected, and the lost have the greatest opportunity in sales as long as they find the right company. Everybody write this down. Find the right organization, the right company, and find the right leader. Everybody right now, Robert, is looking for the right organization with the right leader, and they can't find them both at the same time. So Robert, I'm gonna tell people what they wanna hear. Robert, let me ask you a question. Are you looking for a great organization and a great company and a great leader with also, in addition, a great earning opportunity that can pay you limitless amounts of money? I'm sure you are. Who is it, right? Well, listen, that happens to be my company. It's pretty crazy. 
I'm 38 years old, I'm 44 years old, I'm 27 years old, I've worked for a lot of places, and the company I work for now, it's like heaven on earth. Everybody, it's still my language. It's like heaven on earth, Robert. You know what that means? We love what we do, we help people, and we make a lot of money. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor, I'm gonna tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Most of the time, people think about sales and they think about forcing something on someone that they don't need to make a commission check. That's not what we do, bro. We help people save money and we get paid to do it. Pretty crazy, right? Heaven on earth. Guys, everybody's still my language. You guys must become master closers in recruiting. And by the way, let me tell you why this is so important that if you guys, so I'm talking to Larry, if Larry can go make a recruit, let me tell the loyalty that that person will have to Larry. Whoever makes the recruit, whoever is the person that brings them in, is the person that the recruit is indebted to. Okay, so let me explain this. Robert, if I bring you in and you're working somewhere else and I bring you in, now you're indebted to me, you automatically choose me as your leader because I was the one that had the courage to go to you. You know what I love to say the whole time? Don't ever forget, Robert, you didn't come to me and ask for a job. I came to you because I saw something in you. Now, Robert, I'm gonna ask you a question. If I saw something in you that no one else has ever seen in you, a, a big potential, will you give me the opportunity to po positively peer pressure you in the direction to become as great as I believe you can become? Will you give me permission to do that? Will you always tell me if I'm going too hard, but also will you allow me to do what I, what I need to do because of what I see in you? People will be like, yes, Robert, push me. See, now what I'm doing is I'm brainwashing these people. By the way, it's not bad, okay? Remember I told you, people get brainwashed when they watch the news to be afraid and scared and want to play small and go wear a fucking mask, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna brainwash people to feel, feel strong, feel powerful, believe that they can break generational curses. Hey, by the way, guys, I want to give you guys some word tracks. By the way, these are leadership word tracks. To get your people emotionally tied, emotionally tied to wanting to change. Okay, so let's go through this. Robert, let me ask you a question. In every wealthy person's family, there was eventually a point in time at one time where there was no wealthy person in that family. Would you agree? Yes. Before there's ever any wealthy person, it takes one person to make it happen, okay? And in my family, there was never a wealthy person. 20 generations went by and nobody became wealthy. And I broke the bloodline. I broke the bloodline for my future family. I broke it. Let me ask you a question, Robert. Are you the one that's gonna break the bloodline for your family? Is it gonna be you? Are you gonna be the one? Or does it need to be someone else? Does it need to be another nephew, another, an, another cousin down the road? Or is it going to be you that's gonna break the bloodline? By the way, Robert, if you're the first one in your family to break the bloodline open and make the family wealthy, it'll be the hardest on you. Why? Because if my grandpa was the one that broke it and then he gave it to my dad and my dad gave it to me, well, it's probably easier on me because I got third generation wealth. But do you have any generational wealth coming to you right now or you happen to create it? Most of our people, guys, most of our people have to create it for the first time. You need to explain them to them when they're breaking the generational curses and they're the first person in the bloodline to create wealth in the family, they will have to carry the entire weight on their back of 20 years of, of generational curses. And they can do it and they're strong enough to do it and because you're their leader, you won't let them fail. You must create stories that, that can make it relate with people. Look, hey, Nick Nguyen, I'm talking to you, I'm like, hey Nick, let me ask you a question. Feel me. I'm like, Nick, you, you don't like rejection, do you? No. Neither do I. But you know what I had to learn? I only got rejected when I wasn't as good as I needed to be. Nick, that's why we're going to train, brother. Because the better you get, everybody needs solar. Everybody wants to save money. Everybody wants to be inflation proof. Everybody wants what we have, but we're not good enough at delivering it yet. Which is why we're going to train, Nick. And once you can get that mouthpiece moving, and once you can learn how to, how to be the greatest at delivering it, and how to, how to present, dude, everybody's going to say yes, and the paycheck goes BAM! And it's so close. It's so close, Nick, but I've been where you at. I've been in your shoes. I am you and you are me. Everything you're going through now, everything I see in your eyes, I've been through the same thing, bro. Okay, so guys, listen, 
No, number one, I'm going to talk about this. Everybody write down the circle of safety. Okay? Whoever, whoever builds the greatest team is whoever can create the most trust. When trust is absent, okay, when trust is absent, the team will fall apart. When trust is absent, the numbers go to dog shit. When trust is absent, the company will fade. Every one of you must understand this right now. You guys all, every one of you, okay? If you're really serious about having a life, having a life that counts, you got to give your people a life that counts. Uh, you've heard me say this a million times. I'll say it on social media. If I drive around in a Ferrari and my, fr my team don't have Ferraris, that pisses me off. I'm going to get my team Ferraris. Now, I'm going to tell every single one of you this. I judge a, a leader based on the bottom 80% of the sales team. That's, that's how I judge a leader. Now, I'm, now listen, people don't like this because they start saying, well, but you don't understand and you know this. No, bro, I completely understand. They're on your team. You're not giving them the attention that they need. You're not inspiring them to be great, and you're not training them. I heard you loud and clear. Now, by the way, there's two things we can do, and this is so important as leaders. We either look in the mirror, we own our shit, and we realize what we're doing wrong, or we make excuses, we give away the power to change it, and we blame it on someone else. You guys know what I'm saying, David? Okay, so David, let's talk about a couple things. Let's talk about a couple things right now. Okay, do you... Okay, David, do you want your team to be fire-breathing dragons every day, hungry, just chewing people's of faces off? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, all right, so is that happening with you? Now, hold on. Is that happening with you? Are you doing that? Um, okay, yes stop. No. Stop. Okay, okay. Can I get a yes, and that will be the way you live until you die and they bury you in the ground? Yes, and that will be the way I, I live until I die and they bury me in the ground. Okay, can you change? I'm asking you a question because I'm gonna give you something. David, if you can change, David, listen to me. If I could go to work right. with you, if I could go to work with you for 90 days and I could do like a ride along and I'd just be with you everywhere you go, your numbers would 20X. You know why they 20X? Because we would, we would brainwash everybody that's on the sales team we would, we would get them to believe in themselves in a level they've never believed in themselves. David, I need you to understand this. Your team is creating the production that they're currently creating because of the belief that they have in the current team. The, the belief they currently have in their self. In order for them to increase production and go to a new level, and you want to get more out of them, you, we're going to have to get more out of you. Because they can't give more until you'll give more. Because everything starts, everything fails, and everything rises with the leadership. Some of you guys think about this right now. You want to make more money this year? Okay, are you doing anything different so far this year than you did last year? Forget about technology. I'm talking about human capital. David, you got a team of 100 guys, hypothetically. Every single person should be inspired, motivated, and driven. By the way, can I explain this to you? How many of you guys at one point in time have worked for somebody and you weren't that good at that job at that time, but then you went to a new job and you got great. I did it. Guys, I want to tell you something. I worked for a manager and honestly, I didn't grow with him. You know why? Because he wasn't a self-development manager. He didn't make me better. You know what he did? Every day he used tactics like, you don't do your job, Robert, I'm gonna fire you. Everything was, hey, hey, if you don't do this, you don't work here. You don't do this, you're not gonna get your check. That's why, it, so every day I was trying as hard as I could because I didn't want to get fired. But bro, he never made me better. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't see him get any better. So we were just doing the same fucking merry-go-round every day. And watch, you know what happened? One day he fired me. Best thing that ever happened, David. When he fired me, you know what I did? I went across the street to another manager. You know what this manager said to me? Dude, you're gonna be a badass, bro. I don't know what that guy over there was doing with you, but I see something in you and you're gonna be a badass. Dude, that was all I needed. Everybody think, who's got kids? Raise your hand, who's got kids? I dare you right now to go home and tell your kids that they're gonna be a loser. Watch them start acting like losers. Go home and tell your kids that they're capable of anything, they're great, and they're freaking superhuman. Watch them start doing superhuman shit. You guys' job is to tell your team who they are. That's your job. Your number one job is to tell them who they are. Can I ask you a question? If you don't tell them who they are, what the hell do you think the world's telling them? David, what do you think the world's telling them? Oh man, you know, like shit's hard, you know, you know, oh, you sell solar, that's a joke. Get a real job. You sell door to door, that's bullshit. 
Yeah, right. David. So can I ask you a question? How many guys you got on your team? Uh, 25 or 6. David, out of 26, how many of them are producing over four installations a month? Uh, three. Okay. Can I ask you a question? If you went on the floor and you sold solar today, how many installs could you sell a month? Uh, I'm one of those three that I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are, the, are you in charge of these guys and they're on your team? Yes and yes. David, if you can do it, tell me why they can't do it. No reason. This is where I need everybody to look in the mirror. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you guys something, okay? David, do you think 100% of the world wants to be successful, wants to make a lot of money, wants to have a great life, wants to Absolutely. be happy? I, I think they do too. Why does 1% get it? Guys, listen to me. 100% of the world said in 2024 they were going to have a better year, they're going to make more money, they were going to become greater. 1% is going to get it. David, that means there's 100 people that you're against, and one will get it. It will be the person that recreates their life and reinvents their life. I'm here to tell you guys on the phone right now who you currently are on this call, who you currently are is gonna get you the results you're currently getting. Robert Reed, we cannot sit on this call and sit here and say that we're gonna make more money, we're gonna learn more skill, and that's how that's gonna work. That's bullshit. Everybody's gonna have to change. Everybody's gonna have to change. L listen, by the way, can I ask you a question? Does anybody not wanna change? I mean, is everybody in this call is like, dude, I'm just happy with who I am. You don't need to be in leadership. You do not need to be the leader because the leader needs to be a person who's adaptable to change and who's always changing because shit's always changing. Robert, every day shit's changing, right? Every day we got changes. So if we can't change, I mean, it's always changing though, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So who should be the person most fascinated with change? The leader. The leader should be obsessed with change. You guys got to understand what I'm saying. Your team cannot see a new version of themselves until they see a new version of you. David, remember when we were at the event and I said, you got to go to the gym. You got to eat clean. You got to work out. You got to take care of yourself. You got to have more energy, right? You got to do all these things. The reason why I was saying that is because those are things that we want out of our team, but we can't give our team something that we don't have. Guys, you can't get your team to become something that you're not. Like, I, I can't, Robert Reed, I can't be here on this call and be like, Robert, you, you got to be a killer. If I was like, hey, Robert, you got to be a killer, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're like, dude, Andy, dude, I'm better than you. Why am I even on this call? Why am I wasting my time? And by the way, listen, I always say two things. Listen, I always say this. Number one, what did you build? How did you do it? I'm going to tell you guys, I, I built a nine-figure business in three years, and all of you guys can, can 5X your income this year. Okay, how did I build it? Human capital. Y'all see Selena? Selena was talking to you. Selena, she literally is an exact replica of me. She is crazy. She, how good is Selena's customer service? Robert, has she been good to you guys? Amazing. She represents me. My whole team represents, Robert, you, you, you could have a hundred of my people all serve you like Selena. They would all, you would say the same thing about all of them. You know why? Because they understand that we are the example, the way that we operate on how we can show other people how they can operate. Now, let me tell you what that means. That means if you're the leader in the company, the way that you operate will determine how your team can operate, which means if you can change, they can change. If you can raise your energy, they can raise their energy. If you can believe more, they can believe more. And by the way, dude, one of the crazy easiest things that I'm good at is that, listen, I'm going to go back into this. Broken, lost, frustrated, counted out, okay, forgotten about, those people, everybody write masses. What does the masses mean? If you want to recruit, Robert, are we going after the people that got all their shit together, that got a Harvard degree, that make a lot of money, that mom and dad had a lot of money? No. Robert, if you recruit those people, they're going to be with you for three months and they're going to leave. They're never going to stay here. Their, their family will not allow them to stay here. They have bigger visions. They want to open their own companies. That's all they want to do. They want to run their own businesses. That's not who you want. You know who you guys want? If you guys are looking for the most loyal people on planet Earth, never leave your side, stay with you until they die. They will work harder for you than anyone else ever worked harder for you. Here's who you're gonna go look for, the masses. You're gonna look for someone that's been betrayed, someone that's been broken, somebody that's been counted out, somebody that's been lost and they need to be found, somebody that's lost value in themselves that needs to be told who they are. I'm gonna tell you why. Because Robert, the minute you become lost, counted out, betrayed, or something happens to you and then I show up, with this attitude. Robert, I see you. I see you. 
I know who you are. I know what you're capable of. I don't need you to tell me about your backstory. I can look in your eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. I know that you're a winner. I'm calling you out as a winner. You're going to be one of my top producers. I'm going to train you. I'm going to teach you. You're going to be a great example. And I'm going to give you a new life. You're like, dude, I'm in. What do I need to do? That, that is it, guys. That is it. You guys need to understand our world, our world is in a mental depression state right now because everybody's wrapped up into fucking society. Everybody's wrapped up in conforming. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Everybody's wrapped up in it and you guys need to pull them into your environment. And I'll tell you this, Robert, this is how this works. We create our own economy, we create our own reality. You stay close to me, we're gonna need to audit all your friends, we're gonna need to audit the people you hang out with, we're gonna need to audit the people that are, are the places you go, and you're gonna be close to me, and I'm gonna make you a savage. And all I ask is one simple thing, I ask for loyalty. That's all I ask for. I will give you everything I have, and I will be loyal to you, I'll never lie to you, I will never cheat you. I will never betray you. I give you my word. Ironclad handshake gentleman's agreement. I will never lie to you. All I ask is that you'll is that is that you'll be by my side. And if you'll do that for me, I'll do more for you than anybody's ever done for you in your life. And if you listen to what I say and the coaching that I give you and the advice that I hand over, I will make you a six-figure earner and then a mid-six-figure earner and then I could make you a seven-figure earner if you'll follow my instructions. That's it. Dude, people are like, bro, count me in. Everybody right now, name of a person that wouldn't be like, dude, I'm all in. Okay, so what does that mean? Everybody do me a favor. I would like you to write this. You are a motivational speaker. That is what all of you are. David, you're a motivational speaker. Noah, you're a motivational speaker. Pretty Tony, pretty Tony, you're a motivational speaker. You know what that means? That means your job is every time that you talk, you're going to inspire, motivate, and encourage at all times. I don't ever want to let anyone see you put something negative out of your mouth. Never. Never, 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 never. My team never sees me say anything negative. Let me explain why. Tony, my perception on the world is that everything's good. We're good, okay? Hey, dude, just lost this five customers. We're good, dude. Don't worry about it. We'll get that back today. And by the way, we're going to figure out what we did wrong there and it ain't going to happen again. We're good. We are good. Everybody, we're good. Understand this. When problems happen, I watch leaders dig into the problems and go like, oh my God, I can't believe they did that to us. Bro, the stress and the anxiety, uh, and, and anxiety of you freaking out right now is going to bury your team. And by the way, can I ask you a question? How many of you are having conversations to people on your team and in front of your team that you should not be having conversations in front of them. Earmuffs, our team should not be hearing certain shit. And some of you, you like to be heard because you like people to sympathize with you and have empathy on you. Don't do that. The leader's job is to protect the trust in the company. And every time that I have a problem in my company, I can either go out here and talk about it, man, can you believe this happened? Well, now all of a sudden, my team's supposed to be selling all day long, but instead of selling, they're worried, they're thinking about things that could go wrong, they're creating stories and diseases in their head because I'm out there fucking talking shit. Robert, do you feel me? I mean, like how many times do we have conversations in front of our people that we shouldn't be having, man. And that creates turmoil in them. And by the way, Robert, they never forget it, do they? No, it's a cancer. Yeah, but who started it? We did. We, 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 we. Listen, self-sabotage. 2024 is the year of the complainer in self-sabotage. I am literally watching companies burn themselves to the ground by having conversations in front of people they shouldn't have. R rule number one, we never do that. Okay, like listen, I have things that go on in my life and I literally talk to my wife about them and no one else. You know why? Because I always figure it out. Don't you guys always figure it out anyways? Yeah, yeah but Robert, when we go and talk to someone else about it and we're trying to figure it out, guess what? By the time we get it figured out, you got, you got five people's heads messed up out here. And then you start saying, well, I don't understand why they're not selling anything. Dude, I know why they're not selling anything because you screwed their head up, bro. You're in charge of your team and you self-sabotage them. So I just want to tell you guys that like as we start out this new year, 
we're going to talk about standards. The standards that we must carry is our team can't become what we're not. We can't expect them to have the energy that we don't have. We can't expect them to have good attitudes if we don't have them. 2024 is the year of falling in love with what you don't want to do, but you know you need to do it. That means a guy pops off to you and you can do one of two, two things. You can go to anger quickly or you can say, hey man, number one, I know you don't mean that. I know you. I know you don't mean that and I get frustrated. Sometimes I say things out of anger. So I, I'm glad that you vented to me and I'm glad you told me that, but I know you better than that and I know your heart. Do you see the road I can go with that guy? Or somebody said something, I'm like, hey Robert, I can't believe you said that to me. Dude, do you, do you not wanna work here no more? Look how fast we go to anger. Your fate determines how fast you go to anger. The fate of your company will determine how fast you go to anger. Robert, you can't piss me off, physically impossible. Because you know what I know? The second I get pissed off back with you, this relationship is done and we're no longer doing business together. Every one of you need to understand something right now. When people are going through hard times and they say things they don't mean, you need to have the bigger hold on this. And he said, hey man, I got you. Listen, number one, I wanna tell you something. I'm glad, and listen, watch this. I'm glad you told me that. Andy, you're an asshole, man. I should quit right now. Hey, I'm glad you vented to me. I'm glad you told me that. And obviously there's something inside that's bothering you. And it sounds to me, Robert, like we should have had a conversation sooner. And I'm sorry about that. I apologize, notice, I'll take, I'll take ownership. I apologize that I've been distracted lately, I've had a lot going on, but that's not an excuse, because you're important to me. Let's go sit down and have a talk, okay? I plan on us always being together, whatever it is, it's figure outable, okay? Let's go sit down together. See, now all of a sudden, Robert, we're going to sit down, and the guy's like, man, I don't know, you know, I'm just not selling anything, I feel like Johnny's getting the good leads. You know, it's like, he vents. And you're like, dude, I'm sorry about that. Look, let's go look back at the lead system again. And then obviously I want us to be really close these next 60 days while we get you back on top. Is that cool? Okay, hey, come here, give me a hug, man. I love you, bro. I didn't mean for that to happen. And hey, listen, I don't ever, and by, watch at the end, I say, I don't ever want us to talk to each other this way again. I don't ever want us to talk to each, us each other this way again, but I would like to ask that if something's bothering you for us to communicate sooner so that we don't have a blow up. And by the way, I want you to understand something. I'm not Nostradamus. Like, I don't know, Robert, when something's bothering you. Like, and, and I wish I did. My wife's got a really good intuition and a really good instinct, and when somebody's got a problem, she knows it. She knows everything. I'm kind of stupid, man. I, I just assume everything's okay, and I keep moving, so will you do me a favor? If something's bothering you, will you come tell me, and whatever it is, hey, listen to me. Robert, I'm not just here for the good times when we go kick ass and make money. I'm also here for the times you're suffering and you got problems. I want to work through those with you as well. Guys, how many of you right now are telling your team that I'm also here for you for the, for, for the hard times? I'm here for the bad times. I want to tell you guys a, a mistake that I made that, that hopefully you don't ever make or that will prevent you from making a mistake and maybe losing some of your... Remember this, it's recruit and retain. So Robert, we must recruit new and then we must retain. It, it's, like, it's like old money, new money. We must keep the people we currently have to, to keep making I call it old money, even though it is new money, but that's money that they're going to make. But then we got to find new recruits to make new money. So you got to you got to have you got to retain your people, and then you got to recruit more. Because if you guys are losing people, but then recruiting, all you're doing is a cycle of training, and it's a miserable experience because you're never growing. You're never getting the fulfillment of actually growing something big because you can't retain anything. By the way, the only way that you can retain people is with trust and great leaders. Remember, you need a great organization and great leaders to grow. Okay, so if you're a great leader in a shitty organization, it ain't gonna work. But if you have a great organization, which you guys have, and you're a great leader, you will grow. I wanna tell you guys a mistake that I made, and I think that you guys will, will realize this. So one time, Robert, I was talking to, uh, I, won't, I won't say their name, okay, because I'm just gonna use this as a person. They, they were having some big problems, and I mean like, like they, were, they had attitude problems, okay? And these, these are people who normally don't have attitude problems. But now they had attitude problems. Now, Robert, you understand that I'm all about like loyalty. My fear in life is being betrayed, even though that it's part of the game, it's gonna happen sometimes. I hate it, I hate it. You know, I, I believe that everybody should be good to their word. If we say we're gonna be together forever, if we say we can work anything out, then why don't we do that? Like, I don't understand where other things go inside, private conversations are being had and all that stuff. Like, I don't get that. So there was a time where two, or two like one or two of my top producers were really like, had a, had a big attitude change. And like, I'm watching this, and first thing I'm like, I'm like, dude, like, what the fuck is their problem? This is what I'm thinking. Like, what's their problem? I'm like, dude, I'm being cool to these people. I've been good, Robert. I've been good to these guys. Like, like why would they act this way? So you know what I start thinking? 
I'm like, dude, they're not loyal to the mission anymore. Like, like, oh, I see what's going on now. All of a sudden, I've been taking good care of them and, 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 and now they're too good for me. Or now they've outgrown me or they think they've outgrown me. I'm thinking all these things. What am I doing? I'm making up stories in my head. Does that make sense? I'm assuming that this, 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 this going on. So finally, we sit down together and we just blow up, bro. And, and I go first, right? Because I'm like, I got to get this on my chest. I'm like, you promised you'd be loyal. I've given you everything. And I go through the rundown, right? And they go, I can't believe that that's the way you're thinking. We've never thought any of those things that you're, you're saying. And I'm like, well, then what the f is the problem? And they're like, dude, we got personal shit going on in our life right now. Like somebody's dying in our family. And I'm like, shit. It, man like like guys how many times do we ruin it with people because we aren't close enough to them and they, and they don't feel like they can come to us when they have a problem see I want to tell you something Robert in my company I have a rule no complaining but I also had a phrase that when you have problems you can come to me it doesn't mean that you're complaining okay like I had to explain so I want to teach you guys a lesson Listen, I tell people, there's no complaining in our company, but I tell people anything that they're suffering with, anything that they're going through a problem with, anything that they're going through in life with that's hard, I want to go through it with them. I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, when I go through it with them, number, one, number two, it makes us stronger. Robert, if you're going through a hard time in your life and I'm there with you when you're going through your hard time, you'll definitely be there with me in the good times, especially if I'm there with you in the hard times. But Robert, if I'm only there with you in the good times, and Robert, when you're having hard times and I'm not there for you, who are you going through your hard times with? That person has more loyalty now than me to you because they were there for you when you needed somebody and I wasn't. Guys, it's easy to be some, it's easy to be there for somebody when shit's good. It's hard to be there for somebody when shit's bad. Whoever's there for someone when they're going through a trial in their life, I know it's, I know it's a little bit draining sometimes, but if you can do it, I'm going to tell you what you've gained. You've gained a lifelong relationship with that person and you've gained loyalty to a level that most, because you've got to remember, you've got to wait for people to have problems to get this loyalty. That way you can show them, hey, it's easier for me to say, Noah, whatever you need, I got your back for life. And then you're going through a hard time, then I'm not there. But also, Noah, I got to say, I'm, I got to tell you monthly, Noah, don't, don't forget, I'm there for the good and the bad. So if you got a problem with your family, if you got a financial problem, if you need help with something, like, dude, I'm your guy, just let me know. Okay, cool. Hey, so, so Robert, some of the things that we just talked about today was really about um, the foundation of a great organization is going to lead to a great leader. A great leader will be able to have hard conversations. A great leader will be able to be direct. But a great leader can't have hard conversations and can't be direct if that leader is not willing to grow and change themselves and that the people feel like they can't outgrow because they look up to you because you're kind of like their mentor. Everybody right now, your number one goal for 2024 is to be every single person that's on your team's mentor. Now, the mentor gets to push them. The mentor gets to give the advice. The mentor gets to tell them how hard to work. The mentor is the person that ultimately they will listen to you more than they'll listen to anybody else in their life. And by the way, isn't that what you want? You don't want them to go into someone else to get advice. You want them coming to you, right? Oh yeah. That's it guys. So I would say today, if everybody just thought about one area that they know that they could use um, a level and up in, uh, me, I could use a lot of levels. Um, I, I, guys, I'm just getting warmed up. I know a lot of you guys are. As I was talking to Robert, I'm like, Robert, this is, the, this is the year that we change and grow faster than ever before, and we fall in love with change. Like, do me a favor, guys. Think about this. You got one or two choices, and we'll end the call on this. You got one or two choices. You either suffer becoming a new person and enjoy it, or you suffer staying the same and you don't enjoy it. You're going to suffer either way. There's no coasting because coasting only goes down. It's either you grind and rise or you, 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 you're miserable and you fall. Both are hard. Right, Robert? So everybody this year is going to be a hard year. It'll be the hardest year of your life, either in the best way or in the worst way. I told my wife, this is going to be the hardest year of my life in the most fulfilling, greatest way I've ever had. I'm going to work out harder. I'm going to be more disciplined. I'm going to be better to my team. I'm going to be better to her. I'm going to be a better example. I'm going to make sure I keep negative 
out of my mouth. I'm going to make sure I inspire everybody that I come in contact with. I'm going to make sure I make good decisions. I'm going to make sure that I don't go to anger in any way, shape or form. I'm going to make sure that I don't um, assume things until I really understand what's going on. Because a lot of the times people read into stuff and they create stories in their head that don't exist and they're fake. 99% of the sh that you're thinking of in your head actually isn't real and it doesn't, it's, it's not working that way. It's because we're, we're, we're getting emotional. Our job is to get our team tied to something emotional in their life, which is like, hey, are you going to be the, the first person in your family to break the bloodline open and create wealth? Yes, I want you to tie your feelings to that as you're working. So when you feel like slowing down, I want you to remember what you're after. Okay? Hey, yes, sir. I, I just wanted to add something real quick. I know you're talking about recruitment. One of the things that is going on right now is that the realtor market right now is really, really low because of the high rates on the property. So I actually been going to this market, to this realtor uh, event, and I've been recruiting realtors from, from different uh, different places, giving them our platform and stuff like that. So because of, their, of, of, of the real estate, uh, what's going on in the real estate right now, everybody's looking for an opportunity to make money. And you make a network with them too. So that's something that I did. I did it last night. I was in a meeting from 7 to 9 p.m. and I recruited like 10 people last night. So it's pretty, it's pretty exciting, but just wanted to uh, and let everybody get their heads up on that. Maybe maybe they can all, all do the same thing in their market. Yeah, and Angel, okay, now watch. Now that you recruited those 10 people, now it goes to phase two. You got to recruit. Phase two is you got to get them a check as fast as possible, right? Because it's, yes, like, it's like if you want to get someone addicted to crack and you're going to be their drug dealer, you got to get them yeah. to, take the, to take the crack. And the crack... They got to take the blood. <laughs> yeah, the crack is the cell. And I want to tell you guys, so now Angel's like, look, okay, now we need to have a meeting with these 10 people and say, guys, come on in. I'm going to show you how to get your first check within one month. And once you can get your first check, we'll show you how to get your second. And once you get them that first check, man, and they know that this is real, right? Like, remember, everybody tells somebody about something until it becomes real. And then once it becomes real, Angel, bam, now they're on it. So I love that, man. Hey, good job, dude. Way to freaking think outside the box. This is a year to think outside the box. That's it. And by the way, guys, I want you to do me a favor. I, don't, I, I want you guys to make a commitment that you won't be shy this year. If you walk by someone in the mall, I want you to do me a favor. I want to tell you this. Has anybody ever felt, and I don't know who believes in God or not, but let's just talk about the Holy Spirit for a minute. Has anybody ever been in line at the grocery store and you're like seeing somebody pay for groceries and for some reason you look at them, you're like, I'm going to buy their groceries. And then you're like, nah, this is going to be embarrassing. There's a lot of people behind me. People are looking. This is going to be weird. So literally you miss the opportunity to do what you felt like you needed to do. I need you to understand this. Okay, you must act when you see. This is 2024, act when you see, okay? So that means I'm sitting there and I'm like, dude, screw this. Hey ma'am, you know what? Uh, tell the cash, cash register lady, when we're done checking her bags, I'm paying for this, it's on me, Merry Christmas. People look at you all weird, let them look at you weird. Who gives a shit? They don't understand you, you're not like them, you're different. Matter of fact, it'll inspire them to be better to other people, okay? But Angel, when I'm walking by the mall, I saw this guy, I'm gonna go back 10 years ago, and, and I saw this guy and he was wearing Carhartt. You know, like people wear the Carhartt pants that do construction and shit, right? He's wearing Carhartt pants and a coat and he's walking through the mall. And dude, he do, looks nothing like a good salesman, but he looks like a grinder and he's got that look. So I stop him, I go, hey man, I said, uh, do you work in these overalls, these coveralls? The guy goes, yeah, I said, what do you do? He said, I dig ditches. I said, bro, what do you make a week digging ditches? He goes, I make 400 a week. I said, dude, what if you could make a thousand a day and you didn't have to dig ditches and you could work just as hard as you do now, but not in the cold, you could work indoors and you could sell. He said, where, where do I go to, 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 to apply? I said, with me, dude, give me your number. I had the guy come in for an interview. The guy was one of my top guys, went to making a hundred grand a month, every month in the full dig ditches. Everybody understand this, never underestimate when you got that gut feeling, you act on it right then. You're like, okay, this is going to be weird. Cool. You got four seconds. Get your ass over there. Go shake a hand. I promise you guys, when you got that intuition, act on it. So Angel, good job putting yourself out there. Hey, you worked all day and then you go to something at night. Remember what I said, 2024, you're going to work your balls off. What does that mean? You're either going to freaking suffer and you're going to stay the same or you're going to suffer and you're going to grow. Everybody, let's commit to a year of suffering. Elliot, I wanted to say something. I wasn't invited to recruit nobody. Uh, they were trying to recruit me, hire me. 
And then I said, how come we don't work together? And I said, can I go to the front and give a presentation? And I started talking about solar and how we get paid and how they can make faster money without having to wait for three months. Then everybody all of a sudden they're like, hey, can I get your number? Can we get your contact information? And and it was pretty exciting because I wasn't yeah. I wasn't invited to to to, uh, to recruit people. I was invited to they would want to recruit me. You know, good, good job, dude. That's how it works. Yeah. Hey, hey, that shit right there though, that will be the reason why you grow this year. And so for everybody right now. Okay, let's go beast mode, right? I think today on this call, we've all learned a lot of little things that could really just help us refine who we are. And then obviously, like, look in the mirror, guys, and just say, like, look, my job is to be the greatest leader that ever existed and be the example for everybody. Not only for my family, not only for my kids, but also for my team and also for my clients and the company. Guys, let's go to war. Let's kill it this year. Cool, guys. Hey, have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. I'll see you guys soon. Let's go kill it. Amen. Thank you. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.